estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Nesse caminho eu não desisto Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Atrás não volto, não volto não Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Jesus é o guia Onipotente Atrás o mundo Jesus à frente Atrás não volto Não volto não And Let's give Jesus A beautiful round of applause Dear brethren There's a scripture we'll start our service with It's Psalm 119 Verse number 13 the psalmist wrote something here that seems to be simple, which I've studied before with you. It's about talking with God in the right way. With my lips, I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. Oftentimes, when we pray, we make affirmations with the lips of other people, the ones who worked, who researched, meditated on God's word, they held fast to the revelation God gave them during the sermon. We learned from them, and it's all right. But wouldn't it be better if we declared those things with our own lips, with our efforts? If we started to meditate on the Word, to take note of what draws our attention during the sermon, or the Bible reading, or even through a testimony, if you feel God is speaking to you through it, then, with your own lips, not with someone else's lips, you declare the will of God. Go ahead and do exactly what the psalmist did. With my lips, I have declared all, not just some, the judgments of your mouth. All he had learned from God he gathered as doctrines of the Lord for him, which is the same for me, the same for you, the Word of God is never at odds, and neither are His revelations, because it's God who speaks them. They're God's testimonies. So if you do this, if you declare with your lips all the judgments of God's mouth, whenever any temptation comes, whether it's for you to do something wrong, to accept a dirty offer, to do um, evil to someone in your heart, it doesn't even have to be physically Sometimes when we're upset with someone, God urges us to pray, but we say, no, God, I won't pray for them today. It's so sad you should say, I will pray, because you told me not sin, not to let the sun go down on my wrath. You are the avenger, but I will ask you, Lord, to spare that person so that they may open their eyes. And maybe in the future, that person will help you out. That person will give you a word of comfort or will intercede for you because you prayed for them one day. So with your lips, not with the lips of Dr. Suarez or Pastor Jaime's or someone else's, declare all the judgments of the Lord, because if God gave them to you, he wants them in your lips, with your voice, the voice that God gave you, not the natural normal voice, but rather the spiritual voice, with which you declare that which is already true in the spiritual world. When Jesus said he took our sorrows, transgressions, and iniquities, the chastisement that brings us peace upon himself, and by his stripes we are healed, it's the understanding we have. Not the literal words, I was healed by the stripes of Jesus, but I was healed by the stripes of Jesus, and I remember the moment when God visited me. Then you're speaking for yourself, you're not speaking for me. It did work for me as well, but it's not the same thing for you. In other words, seek to be in touch with God. Consecrate yourself. Make some time. You may say we lead a hectic life, but it's always been hectic even when there were no vehicles. People would find horses that would ride 60 miles per hour and they would be so thrilled. It's the same thing, brethren. We must strive to do something further. If you wake up at 6, you have to get dressed and be at work at 8 o'clock. Wake up at 5.30. Say, God, I need to wake up earlier. Will you help me? Then you go to bed half an hour earlier than usual. God will help you. Keep talking to God. We must not go to bed before talking to God without removing all the evil dust. 
that oftentimes blurs our spiritual eyes or even our heart. Read the Bible a little. No need to read a big portion, okay? A friend told me he was reading four chapters per day. He made a point of letting me know. Actually, he was not getting it. Then he started reading the New Testament again, but now he was reading a small portion per day. He learned to do it right. We must meditate on it so that we can be illuminated by the Word of God. It's not a competition, because after all, God guides us. He guides us in His Word. Even something you may not consider important, but you happen to read, keep reading it, reading and meditating on it until you understand it, and God will give you victory. In the name of the Lord Jesus, now we're going to hear a song. Today we have a singer from Italy. She's our pastor in Italy. She's Brazilian, actually. I won her soul for Jesus five years ago when she was 12, but that's another story. Come up here, Valeria, in the name of Jesus. Are you all right? Thank God I'm all right. What's the title of your song here? The song si chama, is called El Dio del Impossible, The God of the Impossible. It actually sounds similar to Portuguese. It's called Tididili, Impossible. El Dio del Impossible. Who wrote this song? I wrote it. So Jesus it. gave it to you. Yes, it's he did. It's awesome, and the melody is yours. Yes. So the banquet's ready. She sowed, she reaped, she cooked it, and now she's setting the table for us today. La parola means word. La sua parola uh -huh. ha creato tutto. It means the word of God created all things. The world was Let's made by him. Let's return to Il Mundo. Il mundo? Mondo. mondo. Il Mundo è stato fatto da lui. God created the world. That's the translation. Non esiste nulla. There is nothing. Que no possa... El mundo. God created the world. I want to learn that phrase. As, <laughs> uh, a stato. El mundo è stato fatto da What lui. What does stato fatto mean? It means the world was made by him. That's great. Shall we hear the song? Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Amen. Let's learn Italian. Let's praise the Lord in all languages. Amen. He's our maker. He's the Lord. La sua parola ha creato tutto. Il mondo è stato fatto da lui. Non esiste nulla che non possa fare l'onipotenza e il suo nome. Lui dà vista ai ciechi e ai muti fa parlare. Trasforma l'acqua in vino, fa i morti Protegge chi lo ama, rifugio e fortezza è lui. Non esiste nulla che non possa fare, l'onipotenza è il suo nome. Passeggia in mezzo al fuoco, cammina sulle acque. Chi lo ama, rifugio e fortezza è lui. Non esiste nulla che non possa fare, l'onipotenza è il suo nome. Passeggia in mezzo al fuoco, cammina su.
Amen. Valeria, just a second, please. I could understand the oh, 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 seems to be the same, right? Exactly the same. And the words yo sono uh. means I am, like Moses said to, like God said to Moses, I am. So, so that's, that's what sono means. I, I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> right. Valeria, tell us something. I told them about a woman who slept in her car. Tell us about it in one meeting. That woman who lived in a car used to lead a very difficult life. She was abandoned. She was a drug addict. She was in prostitution and she uh, ended up living in a, a car across from a railroad station. One day she saw Dr. Suarez Page in Italian. She got in touch with us. We helped her out. We also talked. We spoke to her about Jesus. Today she's happy with Jesus. One day I may show her singing and praying. She's a blessing. Glory to God. God took her out from that awful situation. God bless her in the name Amen. of Jesus. God's doing those things through our work. Speaking of which, let us see another testimony. This one's from India. I was impressed by this testimony of our work in the countryside of India. See how good God is. Play the video, will you? We are happy to say that we are part of a ministry that fulfills the Word of God and takes the Gospel to all people. I was born into a Hindu family. Through the Faith Show program, I've understood that God did a wonderful work in my life. In my childhood, I was very sick. I had an obstruction in my urinary tract. And because of that, I developed heart problems and became mentally unstable. So because of that disease, I began to seek God. I watched the Faith Show program on TV, and Dr. R. R. Soadis was talking about God. It was a different God, Jesus Christ. I didn't know Him. He was talking about Jesus. I sat in front of the TV, and Dr. Soadis, while he was praying, he also prayed for me. Suddenly, I felt that my disease was disappearing. I prayed with Him in one spirit and a light was shed in my life and changed it completely. And all at once, all my diseases and uncleanness were washed. I saw Jesus as a light entering my dark room. Then I understood that He died on the cross for my transgressions. You came to my village through the TV. You brought revelation and light to me, and you told me the truth about the fact that Jesus, who lives, can give us healing, strength, joy, and peace. Therefore, I thank the Faith Show program so much. Amen. So many people walked together with Dr. Swadis, sharing the same willingness to see the Lord Jesus transforming lives. I heard the calling. We can't ignore it. We know when it's a calling. I felt there was something for me to do, you know. It was a void I had to fill. I had to do God's work because we see miracles happening. People are being healed around the world. Other people, because of the testimonies that we give, will take possession and will be healed as well. I've always wanted to assist the work. Since I cannot go there, I want to help it, right? I want to help Dr. Suarez win more souls to Jesus. I hear many wonderful testimonies through the Faith Show. I understand that the sponsorship, besides other things, helps to evangelize outside Brazil. Today, God spoke to my heart and I evangelize outside Brazil. I do it with all my heart because I know the TV program goes where I cannot. So many testimonies Dr. Suarez has shown to us of the deliverances of the people who try to, to take their own lives. But they hear God's word. This is so heartwarming. It's such a joy. When the devil tries to deceive you, when you're about to pay the sponsorship and tells you can't afford to pay it, when you pay the sponsorship, it seems that, that you feel instant joy. It strengthens you even more. It makes you grow more spiritually. The sacrifice of Jesus brings deliverance to everyone. Keep spreading this truth to redeemed souls. I will be honest, this will be a very difficult week because it is the time of the month in which we have to pay our obligations. If you're a sponsor and haven't paid the sponsorship this month, do it now, please. And if you, if you can go to the bank tomorrow to do that, and I will be very grateful in the name of Jesus. It's, it's been hard, but we are fighting and God is giving us victory. 
in the name of Jesus. And if you are not a sponsor yet, if you don't feel the desire, don't sign up. We must be true to ourselves. I made a vow to God 40 years ago when I started on TV. I would never force anyone whosoever or imply that I'm forcing them. Some say that they're spending all their money with treatments and God healed them. I won't tell them to give any offerings. I won't say that. God has to touch your heart or we would be degrading the holiness of God because he doesn't sell blessings. He doesn't do business with us. He does everything for free. But if you feel it, the workers will be walking around and will hand out the form. 90% of you here are already sponsors. Get the form, fill it out, detach this part so that in the last day of the month I may pray for you in my consecration of 24 hours. That slip that you retain, you should take to the bank and make a deposit. You at home, call us right now. In Cape Town, our helpline number is 21911-5676. The local code is 27 27- 2191156761 one more time 2721911 as for those of you at home who are saying Dr. Swatis I've lost the bank so how can I pay the sponsorship please write down our Ned Bank branch and our account numbers the, the bank branch is 103910 103910 and our account number is 101 101- one nine one nine five four zero one zero one one nine one nine five four zero. Let's resume the sermon, the word of God. Let's now go to the book of Judges. I'll pick two verses from the story of Gideon. When God rose him up to deliver Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Let's begin from Judges 6. Just a reminder to the group women who win the meeting on the 11th of August will take place in Rio, but we have changed the venue, but we still haven't signed the agreement, so I'll only be able to give more information next Monday for sure, or maybe before, then my team will let you know where it will take place. They found a much better place. As to those who come here on Sunday, the first sermon, the fasting one, the consecration, it will happen on August 5th, the 12th, 19th, and 26th, the four days of August, the four Sundays of August. So be prepared, pray and consecrate yourself because I want you to receive all that which you have been searching for. And today's sermon will show you what you have to do. Judges 6 verses, verse number 1 says, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. Everything that happened in the Old Testament is a symbol of what takes place today. The Israelites had done evil in the sight of the Lord, so what happened next? God had to deliver them into the hand of the Midianites, which was a ruthless people that oppressed them very harshly. Today, we may not be completely aware of it, but we do evil in the sight of the Lord. What evil? that which he condemns and when we do not do the things that the lord tells us to do without us noticing it the lord god is just and righteous is inflexible in his holiness he will never overlook our errors just because we are christians no he'll stand upright in front of us because he is a holy god what should we do we should repent We have to seek his presence. How do I know that these things have worked? When I feel the joy of the Lord inside my heart, my mind, my conscience is relieved, relieved, that I understand he forgave me, that I'm in fellowship, and then I am blessed again. They did evil. They did it. What evil did they do, you might ask? Let's go to verse 10 in the same chapter, in which he said, Also... I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. The Lord is actually saying, I am the Lord your God, semicolon. Then he presents his admonitions. He reminds them of his advice. He is the Lord our God. We should not fear anything at all, brethren. Neither should we submit 
to the customs of the land where we live or the land we enter. On the contrary, we have to seek the Lord more because our very presence before them. And if we are sanctified by the Lord, we speak without saying a word. We walk by those who are in error. They look at us and say, wow, it's so good to be like that, to walk like that, to talk like that in a, in a transparent and calm way when deciding things. But some people may be in the kingdom of God they accept Jesus, but they're looking at what's outside. They're accepting the concepts that our non-God-fearing society spreads. The world is changing. It sure is. There were changes in other eras, in previous centuries, and people had problems with those ideas. This, um, this increase in prostitution happened many times in the history of mankind. And those who were involved in it paid a very high price. Today, the same thing happens. It's a cycle like the weather. Every now and then the weather, history repeats itself. Now I can buy that plot of land and build a house. There's no risk of flooding anymore. Don't do that. When the rain cycle repeats itself, it'll be flooded. You'll lose everything. So now things have changed. Some people say that. There's complete liberation now. We can do whatever we want, anything. No, we can't. Sin is sin. Make no mistake about it. People don't seek God. They're crazy. Tomorrow they'll seek him, but won't find him. We must set the example and seek him. I said to you, it's written here. He said to them, when he speaks, it's an order. They were servants of God, descendants of Jacob, the great patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Also, I said to you, I am the Lord your God. This is enough, brethren. We have a God who created all things. He is our God, our protector, our helper, our doctor, our deliverer, our recreator. He gives us good things, good harvests, but they do not obey him. He goes on, I said to you, do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but they feared them. Fearing means to respect, to bow down, to serve. They adopted the very same customs of the people who was there before. And God would do them to them what he did to that people, and he will do that to me and to you. We have found Jesus and holiness. We have found purity why would we now allow those things that they do that God condemns in his word to taint our life now? Some Christians are losing their mind. They're behaving exactly like the lost ones do. They're not keeping the vows they made in the altar of the Lord. Later they will say, I didn't get it. There will be no way out. The Midianites were a ruthless people. They symbolize the ruthless demons. There are people in the hands of the ruthless demons. One day I was talking to a doctor and he said, Pastor, when cancer shows up, it was already there five years prior. If it is treated at the beginning, people won't develop cancer. And I say, when a wrong decision is made, it was being worked on in the heart way before it happened. When he said that, I thought, it's true. People start yielding to sin in their heart they feel an evil, an unclean pleasure. They start entertaining thoughts about it. Some take action soon. Others take some time until the day it happens. And God delivers them into the hand of the spiritual Midianites who will torture them and they will make them wallow in the mire and will lead to eternal perdition. Their life will be very sad and dull. Consecrate yourself. Life's great. Walking with God is awesome. It's productive. It's worth it, and we shall overcome in the name of Christ. Also, I said to you, the Lord God said three things. I am the Lord your God. This is the first thing he said. Now the second thing that he said, do not fear, do not respect, do not submit to the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. All lands had gods of the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Philistines, and so many other peoples. 
It's a conglomeration of evil spirits that dominate people. Oh, everybody indulges in corruption. Don't do it. Everybody is in harlotry. Don't do the same. Everybody wants drugs to be used freely. It would be a living hell, brethren. These people have different purposes. Don't fall for that. If you find yourself entrapped by them, seek God and he will free you. But you have not obeyed my voice. When we don't hear the voice of the Lord, the enemy comes without any mercy, destroying families, taking the sons, taking the daughters to evil ways. God's not like a shepherd that is just a small herd with five cows and a few calves and, and one of them dies. It makes no difference. No. With God, it's not like that. All their children are precious. They're the heritage of the Lord. You must take care of your marriage, of your family. All those who descend from you, you and your household will serve the Lord. How will you come into God's presence the day he requires an account from you? What should you do? Consecrate yourself, God. Please show me. Reveal it to me. God, I want to understand your word. After you understand it, declare it with your lips. Declare all the judgments of God and you will be blessed. We're living a very good time. God is revealing his word to us so we may open up our hearts. He opens his word. We open our heart. He illuminates us. We take possession of our blessing and we become conquerors. Don't let anything, not even the coming of age, cause you to feel spiritually weak. Thinking there's no way out, no way at all. No, there is a way. When Moses was 120, he didn't lack strength. His eyesight didn't grow dim. Seek and you will find. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be opened. This is the word of Jesus. They didn't do it. And for seven years, they lived in poverty. God doesn't want us to live in poverty. Let me pray with you now. God, thank you so much for this message that has awoken us. Some people are behaving, Lord, as if they had drunk a very strong alcoholic beverage and now they accept everything. Your people, God, who should be clinging to your every single word every single day and be filled with the Holy Spirit, with heavenly virtue, and have the power to heal those whose minds and heart are weak, but they are being weak. We must never accept it. On the contrary, we must rise up. We must do your will. And today is the day, God, to start anew. It's a new beginning. It's our decision. We're consecrating ourselves. In the next few days in the month of August, we will be the last four days of this consecration here. Prepare us, O oh God, for this time of consecration, of pursuit, of spiritual warfare, of battle for ourselves, our family, as well as for those we don't know. God, watch over our work all over the world now. Probably at this moment, thousands of people are reading messages on Facebook or on YouTube, Lord. And today, many will watch us on TV or watching our previous programs. God, speak to their hearts. God, we are waging a war in favor of those people like that young man in India who had a urinary problem since he was a boy. And after being healed through the faith show, he is free. So in the name of Christ, we bind all evil now. That splitting headache that makes people think their head will blow up. This pain is destroyed now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. I will pray for all of you now. Stand up, please, because we will send all the evil away now. I am doing it this way because I know some people are shy or they don't want others to know they have a health problem. It's between them and God and the devil is oppressing them but we will cast him out. So stand up now along with everybody and I'll cast all evil out in the name of Jesus. Bow your head and close your eyes now and pray now for half a minute and tell God what you want from him. God, they are praying now. They're opening their heart. 
My soul is connected to their soul. I forbid the devil to touch their life. I paralyze his evil actions. And I am saying now, go away. Let go of these men. Let go of these women. Let go of them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Cast him out, brethren. God is working at this very moment. God has started to work. God, now I ask you to come down with your power on your family now. Please touch all those who are praying, those who have a problem that no one knows, not even the husband or the wife, Lord, not even their children know, not even their parents know, but you know and they want to be delivered now. And your word imposes no conditions. It only says that if we believe, we will see your glory being manifested. So I paralyze all evil actions and I say to this filthy spirit, you must let go of these people. You must let go. You must wither away now. I'm not asking kindly. I am giving an order. I am making a demand in the name of Jesus Christ. Go away, tumor that's in this brother's prostate. You have to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go away now, all kinds of evil that's been lodged in these people. I'm giving an order in the name of Jesus Christ. You must go now and never return. I rebuke all evil from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Any skin disease, any evil disease in their skin, whatever the name it might be, it has to go now. Disease in the bones, in the muscles, Go now in the name of Jesus Christ or in the nerves. Go away now from any part of their body or from their soul. All sadness, all discouragement, all apathy will have to go away now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm giving a commandment. I'm making a demand. Go now. You have to disappear. Go now. Wither away. Demons, let go of these people. Go away, Amorites, Philistines, or whatever name you have. You must go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave their ankles now. Ever since they took a tumble, their ankles have been hurting. Their tendons hurt. Go away now. Go from their body. Go from their soul. Go away and take your sorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. God, bless these people now. Oh my God, rise these people up. Rise these people up for your glory. Visit them and give them comfort in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you. Amen. Look at me now. Who can say that this prayer did good for the soul? You were feeling down but not anymore. Are you free? Raise your hand like this in the name of Jesus. I won't hear testimonies. I just want to know how many. Glory to God. Is your body healed? I won't hear your testimonies because we don't have time. But if, if your pain is gone, your, your problem's gone and you have been healed now, raise your hand like this in the name of Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Your testimony has been given. And Sister Eliana, I see you are here with us. Dr. Suarez, today I want to show you this wonderful CD full of songs. Its uh -huh. title is Vittoria by Pastor uh -huh. Valeria. 13 songs. 13. 13. Uh -huh. 12 in Italian, and the song Vittoria is in Portuguese. Okay, so after the service, Valeria will be there taking pictures. There must be many people of Italian ancestry here. And some even maybe speak Italian. I remember one day I reprimanded a young man who was in error. He wasn't an evangelical. He, he was leading a, a wayward life. He said, oh, in fact, I'm going. He said, oh, I'm actually going to Italy because that woman is paying me. And, and it was an elderly woman with a young man. You know what the outcome is, right? And I'm studying Italian and she's paying this trip for me. I said, can you speak Italian? Si. Io parlo italiano. He noticed he had made a mistake. It was sad. Valeria will be at the store. You may take pictures with her and please pray for, for the Italians. They need to encounter Jesus, brethren. The Italians neck who live there are stiffer than the ones we have here. Ours are ways more flexible. That's the result of the devil's actions, but they can be undone. 
things weren't easy here either. I know how much we suffered 40 years ago when we started, but God has given victory to us. In a few years, Brazil will be of the Lord Jesus. This is really beautiful. This is so good. The Grace Store has Valerius CD and others as well. Call us in Cape Town. The local code is 27219115676. I'll repeat, 27219115676. You can visit the store through our website. It's on gracesouthafrica.com. Or you can leave us a message on WhatsApp and our team will call you. It's 27079496 Now let's watch the real life drama in the name of Jesus. In 2002, I went to the Grace of God Church, and I still attend it. I have received many miracles there. You know, my life has been completely changed. We are always at the church and always praying. We pray constantly for our family. I sponsor on behalf of my family. God touched my heart, and I did it. And if it weren't for people who sponsor God's work, it would be very difficult to spread the message of the gospel to the whole world and so many nations reached by the Faith Show. Time went by, and in 2018, José's wife noticed that his health was not perfect. It wasn't normal to be feeling so much pain. I could barely move my legs. I felt pain in my legs and in my groins, and I also could not empty my bowels. He was losing weight and getting very thin. The doctor requested many types of exams and blood tests, and I also had a colonoscopy with biopsy which revealed I had intestinal cancer, a malignant cancer. I wasn't shaken by it. I kept my cool. I serve a living God, so there's nothing to fear. I kept working normally, but it was only possible due to God's mercy. Some people who work with me and also attend church, they witnessed it. We saw his health condition. He worked, but always feeling pain. And I always talked to him and said, God is with us. I went to church and talked to Pastor Sandra. She began a chain of prayer. We started to pray for life, for his wife. We entreated God. We did fight so that God could bless him with divine healing. I started to put the glass of water while watching the face show. He would drink it. I would make coffee with it. When I get home, I watch Dr. Suarez on a public channel and then on HTV, always listening to the Word. At that moment, God guided us to do campaign, and He would take part of it on Mondays. I never missed any day of the campaign. The campaign was about God being our judge. We were in the court of justice. During the campaign, uh, in the meetings, during the, the preaching, I began to feel light. Each Monday, a different pastor would preach and minister the blessing in our church. The moment Pastor Alencar said that someone would receive a great miracle, José was the first to stand up and run. He was barely able to walk, and then he started to run. All I wanted was to be delivered from that malignant disease. The next day, he was feeling better. He didn't have the countenance of a sick person. That day was decisive for him. On that week, he would undergo an exam. The doctor said to me, José, the exams are scheduled, but this will be the first one, a cult blood test. If there's any sign of blood, you'll have to be operated on. He got the result and saw the doctor. The doctor said, you have no disease, so there's no need to be operated on. What has happened to you? Because you have nothing. The doctor examined me very carefully and said, you have no problems, you're completely free. I said, it's God, that's what I said. I serve a living God. He is healed. He is free. I didn't need radiotherapy or chemotherapy. It wasn't necessary. God operated on his life and now he works normally. Today I'm very thankful. I do not have any troubles to do anything. God is always present. The Lord pleaded His cause and gave Him victory in the name of Jesus. From the moment we decide to serve a living God, there is nothing impossible for Him. What a beautiful story, brethren! You know, I'll see if during the next faith show I show another case. It's the story 
of a woman who lives in another town. I heard it this week, something very serious. She had a big tumor and even before her treatment began, she prayed and Jesus healed her. She expelled it. And her doctor from another religion said, I'll be a sponsor of this program. It's true. We still haven't recorded it because the doctor ordered an exam and the results take two months to be finalized. It was something serious. Sometimes people expel the evil. Other times God heals them like that. Man, the moment our pastor, Alan Carr, said that God was working, he started to run in the church, but before he couldn't even move. It was God. Hold fast to the word of God. Cling to Jesus he knows what to do, and he doesn't lie. He said, He who asks receives. He who knocks the door is open. He who seeks finds. The message is for you in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. The question segment now. Shall we see it? Doctor, how do I know when God speaks to my heart? Ah, uh, you know it, because it's not with the mind. You get it when it's God speaking to you, and it's through His Word. And you haven't had the chance to ask God to give you this opportunity. Second question. Dr. Soares, can someone whose profession is considered shady return you the tithe and give you offerings? No, true professions are never shady, actually. All professions, whether you're a cleaning lady or something, but if you're dealing drugs or doing things that uh, the people of God do not do, you must stop doing it because you are in the hands of the enemy and it's better to starve with God by your side than feast on the banquet of the enemy. It's not worth it, but God will never let you starve. God opens doors way more quickly than you think. So do make amends with the Lord. Let's go to the Open Your Heart segment, shall we? Dr. Suarez, my daughter was presented at church when she was born, but she hasn't been baptized. She always goes to church, but she hasn't confessed Jesus as her Lord. She has been going through many hardships since she was 15. Her husband beats her, but she always hid it from everyone until one day she had enough and registered a police report against him. But she still lives with him, and they leave a turbulent life along with their three children. She suffers so much, Dr. Suarez. I can't stand seeing her go through such ordeals with my grandchildren without being able to do anything. Dr. Suarez, I need your guidance. You cannot say, you see, you don't, you don't go to church and don't accept Jesus. That's why you suffered. No, you're to blame. Don't say that, dear daughter. Let's change your story. You've heard about Jesus, um, about his blessings. You're at the church. Be firm with Christ. Accept him. He will change you completely. These sufferings won't be in your life if you serve the Lord. Believe in Jesus and you and your household will be saved. Stop speaking evil of him. Stop, stop bickering. Stop spiting him because he's an aggressive man. Let us seek God and Lord will turn that savage lion into a beloved lamb of God. God will do that. You can rest assured. Let's watch the Grace TV moment now. My husband used to come home and break everything like an untamed horse. After I installed the Grace TV at home, things changed. Before dinner, he sits down and watches Grace TV. It's so peaceful at home, it doesn't seem. There's a man in the house. He's so calm now, you know? Things have been peaceful since I subscribed to Grace TV. He used to drink so much, he would drink and start cursing, he would swear at everybody, he would kick our gate. One day I talked to him seriously and I rebuked all evil. Things changed. He's calm now, he goes to his room to hear the sermons. He's calm. He stopped drinking, he's peaceful, he's a blessing. Everybody should have it, because it's a blessing. I just can't live without it. Brethren. <laughs> I didn't expect she would say those things. It seems to be the answer to that woman's request. Hey, sister, forget what I said and subscribe to Grace TV. Yes, in her case, her husband was the bully, right? That savage lion will be turned into a lamb, truly loved by the Lord, absolutely. If you don't have it at home, get this flyer and pray to God and say to him, God, is, 
Is this right for me? The devil will try to keep you from subscribing to Grace TV. The devil's task today is to keep people from subscribing to Grace TV. You have no idea about the persecution we suffer because of the Grace TV. I cannot disclose what it is. Things that sometimes make us want to maybe even give up. But no, we will go on in the name of Christ. You, no matter who you are, you can take this flyer. It's for free. Take it home. No, no need to inform your name or address. If you feel it from God, just call this number here. If you don't, there's no problem at all. You can take it. Everybody can take it home. Don't give your name or address. You at home, give us a call. The number is here. The local code is 27-21-911-5676. 27-21-911-5676. Our website is ongracesouthafrica.com. We have three WhatsApp numbers. One of them is 2707-9496-9037. Sign up right now. If you unsubscribed, subscribe to it again. Don't let the Midianites rule over you. Stand up, please. We're going to pray, brethren. It will be a fervent prayer. If God started to work, he will finish it now. The moment we finish this prayer of faith, if you couldn't walk before, you'll be start running, either here or at home. Bow your head and close your eyes, God. We are praying now in the name of Jesus. We are in your holy and powerful presence. God, I paralyze all the deeds of the devil in the life of these people. Devil, you have lost the battle. You must go away in the name of Jesus.